Joint replacement surgery in the most simplest of terms is where we open up the joint, whether it be the hip, the knee, the shoulder, the ankle, what, uh, whatever joint we're discussing, the diseased portions of the joint, which are worn away and where the cartilage has eroded away, are removed. And basically the eroded parts get replaced with either metal and or plastic or a combination thereof. Joint replacement surgery is available at all three Inspira Medical Centers, including Elmer, Vineland, and Mullica Hill. I educate a lot of my patients. I take a lot of time in the office doing so and letting them know, you know what their operative and non-operative options are. And I really start by saying no one ever has to have a knee replacement or a hip replacement surgery. It's something that's a choice you know, between them and their family and the provider, and we make a decision together. Um, usually when they get to me or you know, when we've had a relationship for a long time, they've tried multiple modalities of conservative treatment options, which in general is anti-inflammatories, multiple injections, trying different activity modification, physical therapy. When all those things have, have failed to provide them with relief, getting back to you know, what they want to do, Whenever they can't do those things anymore, that's usually when they are having more bad days than good days, and they're starting to think, you know, maybe it's time for that joint replacement. The, the biggest difference we make with joint replacement surgery is allowing people to do things they want to do. You know, when people want to go to their grandson or granddaughter's soccer or field hockey or cheerleading practice, or they want to go down and walk on the beach with their kids because they're on vacation, and they're not doing it because they know their knee's going to hurt. That's, that's, that can be corrected. And you know, seeing people getting back active and, and coming in weighing less than before you did the surgery because now they're able to walk and do the things they want to do, that's the real joy, is the difference you make in people's lives. The history of joint replacement certainly has changed significantly within the last 10, let alone 20, 30, 40 years or so. Historically, joint replacement was done only in a hospital setting in which it's kind of maximally invasive procedures, big incisions, a lot of um, muscle being cut, um, soft tissues having more damage, so not only the bone needing to heal to the implant or the uh, implant healing to the bone, you also need the soft tissues to recover at a higher level. A lot of technology has uh, been advanced over time, in particular in medicine and hip and knee surgery, a lot more minimally invasive procedures. We use a lot of robotic surgery that can get patients back a little bit faster than conventionally was done, a lot more, with a lot more accuracy as well. I think the most common misconception that people hear when they consider or are talking about joint replacement surgery is pain after surgery. Certainly there's a level of discomfort that you can expect after joint replacement surgery. However, over the last 10, 15 years, we've come a long way with modifying a lot of our pain protocols that really involve minimal use of narcotics and allow patients to feel more comfortable, get out of bed sooner. In fact, most patients are able to ambulate with the assistance of a walker or a cane a few hours after surgery. Surgery is a big stress to the system and we're trying to do everything that we can to minimize the complication risk that the stress in parts on your body. So if you're a smoker, um, quitting smoking is really important for wound healing and minimizing the risk of any type of infection. Having a well-balanced diet and keeping your nutrition up. Um, if you have any underlying medical comorbidities, including diabetes or high blood pressure, those are all things to really get under control to optimize not only your musculoskeletal health, but your overall health to prepare for um, the stress of surgery. So after surgery, patients typically are uh, brought to a recovery room, and usually within an hour or two after surgery, we have them up and walking with uh, physical therapy. They start with a walker, and as the days and weeks go on, they progress to a cane and nothing else. And everybody's timeline's a little bit different when they feel comfortable to do uh, doing so, but there's no restriction for my part as to when they can use one versus the other. We want them moving, getting back to, to um, their uh, desired uh, functional level. Usually I'll see a patient back in around 10 to 14 days and at that point it's focusing mostly on range of motion and looking at the incision, make sure everything looks fantastic. And then after that, the next four weeks, really from week two to week six, is really focusing on now increased range of motion, getting more strength back, doing a little bit more activity, certainly focusing on stairs up and down. After the six week mark, it's mostly focusing on more higher level activity. Um, trying to get back to where you almost don't realize your knee or hip is even there anymore. 
And then I do have another subset of patients that want higher level activity, whether they're cyclists, marathon runners, things like that. And usually that can take, that higher level activity can take a little bit longer. So usually that three to six month, even a year mark is really where you're training um, to get back to that high functional level. The nicest thing a patient can tell me after surgery, whether it's at the six week mark or their three month mark, because everybody's a little bit different, is doctor, I don't know why I waited so long to have this done. Ask people who've had their joint done, and the vast majority done in the last 15 to 20 years will tell you it's the best thing they ever did. We're really proud of the program that we're able to develop here so that we really can deliver higher level care to our community, the community that we live in ourselves. Um, and I think it's even important for patients to understand that if, even if you're stuck, you don't know what your options are, just coming in to have a conversation with us to let you know, here are your options and this is how we can develop a plan together. I think that really does provide a, a huge advantage for patients that live in our community because they don't have to travel longer distances to do so. A very common misconception is that if you go in to see an orthopedic surgeon, you're signing up for surgery, which is anything but the truth. Most patients that we see on a daily basis were not scheduling surgery. Um, it, surgery is only indicated when the other non-operative measures have failed. So that's number one. If you're a, number two is if you're a patient that's already scheduled for surgery, Inspire is with you every step of the way, from preoperative education classes to a friendly nursing staff in the recovery unit to private rooms. You have the benefit and the resources of fellowship trained academic medicine in a community setting. Whether you're considering surgery or simply want to discuss non-surgical options, we're here for you every step of the way with whatever you need.